it's February. It's the month of Aquarius and Pisces and um, I am Aquarius. I am having my birthday or my Sunday this month and um, the full moon this month is called the snow moon or the ice moon and everything's coming to life. There's a lot happening in the calendar that dates back which I'm going to tell you about um, all the way back to pagan times um, including the festival of Imbolc, there's Valentine's, there's Pancake Day, all sorts and the whole world just seems to be coming to life. So the name February comes from the Latin Februm and that means purification and that is all to do with the Roman festival that happened around the time of the 15th of February where everybody would spring clean their homes and spring clean their bodies and their minds as well so they would um, take stock of their diet and really try and use that time to get fit and healthy so um, could be links there with Lent now but traditionally most religions um, have a period of abstinence where they cleanse the body through um, emitting certain foods that, you know, aren't too good for you. What's lovely about February though, especially the early part, is the period known as Imbolc, which is the pagan name. Um, and it, there's lots of meanings to the name. Some say it comes from um, a word meaning in the belly and some say it's to do with ewes milk but basically it coincides with the time where the spring lambs um, start appearing hence the ewes milk and also um, in the belly refers to the earth being pregnant so full of life that's just beginning to show like the early pregnancy of a mother whose rounded tummy would just be about to show a little bit so life sort of peeping up all those bulbs all those buds on the end of the branches so it's a really lovely time in bulk and it lies directly halfway between Yule which is Christmas and the spring equinox so around February the 2nd, the time of the in bulk period, it's also known as Candlemas and in Candlemas it's where everyone would take their candles to church and have them blessed and use them throughout the year for their lighting um, and the church would fill their windows with snowdrops and white flowers um, and there would be a huge celebration at that time and if you remember from last video the last video on candlemas it's the only day that snowdrops superstitiously should be taken inside the house but the whole candlemas um celebration actually predates christian times when it was called the festival of light and everybody would light a candle in their window trying to lure back the sun and the warmer days so um go and light some candles in your windows and celebrate the fact that spring's on its way and Let's get that sun lured back. Give us some warmth. <laughs> I'm just watching all these crows busily flying about their um, treetop nests with bits of twigs and stuff in their mouths. They're cleaning up last year's. They're cleaning up last year's. They're trying to catch them on camera. Cleaning up last year's nests and um, making sure they're all fettled and repaired and spring cleaned and comfy and cozy for the year ahead. They will come back to the same nests, crows. There's clouds moving across this brilliant blue sky. It's gorgeous today. So, yep, herons do this as well every year. They will clean and maintain last year's nests, have a good old spring clean, a good old sort out, make them all tip top for the year ahead. So one of those old sort of farmer's fables regarding the weather is that if on Candlemas Day the weather's bright and sunny, there's more winter to come. And if it's um, dull and rainy and cold, then the worst of winter is over. Well, this year it was very sunny and um, I have a feeling there's more winter to come as well. Um, other things about in bulk then, it's a good time to sow some seeds, that would be a traditional thing to do and it's the right time of year to get your seeds going inside um, and have a good old spring clean of your house like the Romans would do. Just watching a little robin, sorry I'm a little bit distracted, he's trying his best to pull up a worm at the side of me. <laughs> Thank you. 
also other things about the weather then in February. It's said that a ring around the sun or moon means snow or rain will follow soon. And this is uh, most likely to happen in February, if you get snow in, in Britain. It's the um, historically the snowiest month. So if you see a halo around the sun or the moon in, in around February time, then it's likely that we're going to get a downpour of some sort. We've also got Valentine's Day on February the 14th. That's an ancient ceremony where you show your love to somebody. Um, but I was reading the other day about something called Vinegar Valentines, where in Victorian times, for a penny, you could buy a caricature of someone and tell them exactly why you didn't want them to be your Valentine, <laughs> which I think is really mean. I'm just looking at all these brambles that are still really green. And in a milder winter, they can be like evergreen. And brambles are a pest when you're gardening because they hook onto you and rip your clothes. But they're so important. They're so important as food and shelter for so many creatures. Um, and of course, you get the blackberries from them. But also, they're really important at guarding young saplings from wildlife. So new, new sapling trees and shrubs will be well protected from deers because of these beautiful brambles. And the bramble leaf is actually really good as a herbal remedy. It's something that really you would only want your herbalist to prepare for you as it can be um, quite strong. But if you have diarrhea or sickness and you want that drying up quickly, one bramble leaf in a tea is a really good remedy. So Shrove Tuesday is the Tuesday before the beginning of Lent. And in the olden days, you would go to the priest and confess your sins of what you've done wrong and purify your soul, ready for the period ahead. Um, and it was that you were, when you went to the priest, it was called being shriven. So you had been shriven for your wrongs. So that's where the word shrove comes from. And traditionally in England, we make pancakes on Shrove Tuesday. So this is where you would get all your old larder stock throw them together, your flour, your eggs and your milk and uh, have a good old feast before a period of abstinence in Lent. Got some beautiful daffodil buds here ready to pop. I haven't seen any out in the wild yet. The earliest I've ever seen daffodils was Boxing Day one year. But it's, uh, it's February now and we're only just about to pop. I'm just going to zoom in down here this ground is covered in garlic mustard leaves now these will grow really tall and eventually get white flowers at the top and if you get these in your garden they are delicious or when you're out and about they have these heart-shaped leaves with lots of little veins all over them and they taste like a mixture of mustard and garlic and they're really tasty I'm gonna get a couple now mmm I love the stuff. If you like peppery things like rocket with a slight bitterness, which is really good for your digestive enzymes, then you'll really like this. Eating bitter foods or bitter leaves with your meal, if you have digestive problems, will really help you out. If you just have a few leaves of rocket when you eat, the bitter uh, receptors are not just found in your mouth, they're found in your stomach as well. And when your body um, perceives a bitter flavour, then um, your digestive juices are stimulated more, which will help with your digestion so much better. It's a really good tip that helps a lot of people. So rock it just before you have your meal. It helps out no end. Or if you're lucky enough to have a garden full of this, which I get it every year, eat some garlic mustard. It's a leap year this year. So there's 29 days in February. And if you're born on a leap year, I think this is really cute. You're called a leapling. Um, and it's tradition that a female can propose to a man on a leap year. Uh, thankfully, we're in the kind of days where that's okay to do anyway these days. But um, in the olden days, if you were to wear a red petticoat and um, propose to your beloved on, um, on a leap year, then it was supposed to give you look. But also at one point there was a law that said that if you were to propose to a man on a leap year, he couldn't refuse you. 
unless he bought you 12 pairs of gloves. So maybe if you're a bit short in the uh, winter woolly department, you could go and ask somebody to marry you and get them to <laughs> refuse you and buy you all these gloves. The angle of the sun is really special at this time of year. We're creeping towards March where we'll start to get vitamin D from the um, UVA again. At the minute, since October, it's been impossible. So it's really important to supplement with vitamin D. But another good thing about the way the sun is at the minute, you get the best rainbows of the year with the biggest arches. So look out for winter rainbows because they can be very spectacular indeed. I can hear a lot of birdsong around me. I can hear the blue tits chirping away. And it's that time of year where the male blue tit will do all these sort of chirps to um, attract a mate and then sort of do a, a vertical dive to where she wants to nest to try to impress her. So look out for blue tits doing aerial displays. And it's the time of year where you might start to hear the woodpeckers again. And the woodpeckers um, have got this special skull that the brain is really close to the to the actual bone so there's not a gap for the brain to rattle so much because um, a, a woodpecker will peck a tree 20 times a second which is just incredible and they'll usually pick a hollow tree to make more noise and it's to mark their territory and attract a mate. Amongst all the deciduous trees are the tall Scots pines doing a wonderful job of sheltering all the little birds during the winter from predatory buzzards and sparrowhawks, giving them some shelter from rains and winds. They really are quite magnificent and a friend to all the small little birds. It's actually a really great time to go bird spotting because all the leaves on the trees are still off so you can see what's happening um, but if you're lucky enough to see wax wings at this time of year um, you'll see them passing a berry from beak to beak as their courtship um, and some of the lovely courtships that happen in the in the feathered kingdom at this time of year are the great crested grebes if you live near a lake and they are on the lake then um, look out for them ruffling their feathers up around their neck and then performing the most beautiful coordinated ball ballet style dance which culminates with them diving together and then presenting each other with pond weed. Blue tits and great tits and long tailed tits are all grouping together as party birds at the minute. Um, that means that they wouldn't normally flock together but they're getting safety and security from one another by being in large flocks and sometimes um, gold crests and um, tree creepers will actually join these flocks as well so um, look out for huge bunches of party birds I always think that sounds really exciting but uh, it's not as exciting as it sounds from a distance everything really does look still quite bare and bleak but you need to get up close and you can see that everywhere you look is full of potential right now. On the tips of everything are the beautiful little buds, heavily guarded by an armoured coating at the minute to keep insects off and birds and any frosts. But here is the in bulk style life, only just peeping out. But it's there if you look for it. This is what I have come down here for this morning. I've been promising you hazel catkins since the January video. And here they are. Beautiful, beautiful pollen encrusted catkins. So if you're particularly sensitive to pollen, you may actually have been sneezing a little bit on warmer, sunnier days this month. The pollen on this catkin is male and hidden away on the branches are tiny little receptacles that are the female section and this beautiful pollen doesn't look like it's quite ready yet will be released in the wind and aimed with the hope of it landing on the female receptacle on the tree in order to grow beautiful delicious hazelnuts in the autumn. Now these will go all 
open like this one and drop off and then my little girl will pick them up and pretend they're caterpillars and look after them and carry them around in her pocket. <laughs> oh, that's what she did when she was younger. She still has a, a liking for them now. They look gorgeous against this blue sky, don't they? I've been waiting for a blue sky day to come out and get these. And they don't have the same effect on a grey sky. So animals, the fox, the vixen and the dog fox have finished their mating, although I heard them screeching outside my window the other night, so mine don't play by the rules. But um, they should be finished mating, and the female is now very secretive and making her den under sheds and in old wasteland and in old uh, hedgerows, and she will stay hidden in her den until the cover of night and when she'll creep out in darkness. So she'll become very secretive. Um, and if they had males last year in their cubs, then unfortunately they've been kicked out and made to go elsewhere. But the females, the young females are allowed to stay as long as they participate in babysitting duties. So um, there are some rules though. The young females are not allowed to mate while they're under their parents' house, which is <laughs> quite a common human thing as well. And um, if they do, they get kicked out. Uh, but one of the benefits of hanging around and babysitting for the parents is that they get a good food supply for another year. Squirrels then. They won't usually tolerate other squirrels in their nests, but at this time of the year, they will let others in as long as they know who they are. They won't let any old strange squirrel in, but you could find seven, eight, nine snuggled up together in a nest whilst it's cold, which sounds incredibly cute, doesn't it? I'd love to peep in and see all these snuggled up squirrels. And then uh, frogs, they've been hibernating in the mud under the ponds and they're, they're waking up and getting ready to spawn. So they'll mate and then the next day their eggs, their, um, oh gosh, what's it called? Frog spawn. Their frog spawn will be laid. So when the frogs do lay their frog spawn, they'll lay around 3,000 eggs. And uh, when the eggs hatch, the little tadpoles will first of all feed on the algae and then they will turn carnivorous and start eating insects that land in the water. And they are um, very vulnerable, vulnerable to frosts and bad weather and of course to predators like the birds and also newts and things would eat them. The amazing thing with the frogs is, is that they will travel back to where they were spawned to mate and um, I have a pond in my garden and it sounds like a bunch of motorbikes the night before the eggs are laid, all the males croaking away. It sounds like brr, 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 brr. real rumbling noises in the garden. You know that the next day there'll be a ton of frog spawn. Just found these little crocuses popping up. Um, I don't know if you remember in my last video, it said that the snowdrop is the flower that will be at its best at in bulk. And on Valentine's Day, the crocus will be. So here they are, it's not quite Valentine's Day yet. They're definitely getting ready, popping their heads up. All along the edges of the pathways at the minute, you'll see chickweed popping up, Stellaria media. And this can be used like a spinach or a spring greens in pestos and sauteed, but it also has lots of medicinal properties. Stellaria media because when this flower opens up it looks like a little star. Stella means star. Now usually if I find this somewhere where it's unlikely that dogs have been you'll find me munching on this just straight off the plant but this is in a prime dog walking area so it could well have some unwanted droplets on it. One of the best places to find chickweed is along the edge of paved areas like this You'll often find it popping up along the side of your patio. But at least if you find it in your patio and you've not got a dog, you know you can eat it. So don't just pull it out. Taste it. Have a look at it. 
check it first, always check with a plant identifying book or there's loads of good apps you can get. Check it out first and have a nibble. So chickweed is what it's commonly known as, Stellaria media, because it was um, and is still given to chickens. Um, this little plant is so good if you've got anything wrong with your skin. So you can buy it as tinctures or you can make your own or you can make your own infused oils with it. So if you have eczema, psoriasis, anything itchy on the skin, it's a cooling herb, um, which means it's really good for anything that's inflammatory. So boils or splinters, anything like that. And this is a great first aid herb to have in the house to put on skin problems. Also, like the violet that we looked at earlier, it's really good for respiratory conditions, which I think is fascinating at this time of year when most people have got coughs and colds from all the winter months and nature provides us with these expectorant type flowers at this time of year that help respiratory problems. I've just found a patch of purple flowering stinging nettles, except they're not stinging nettles at all. They're actually totally stingless and not part of the nettle family. They're actually part of the mint family. And these too have a lot of benefits. So the purple dead nettle, which isn't actually a nettle at all, is really nutritious and it can be used in your salads chopped up or you can put it in soups or stews to be honest you won't really know it's there because its flavor is not very strong and it definitely isn't minty even though it's part of the mint family um, it's full of vitamin c and iron and good fiber for your stomachs um, and you know for keeping things moving <laughs> but also it's um, really useful for people with allergies it's it's meant to have a good um, method of keeping the um, histamine response down. Also, it's anti-inflammatory, antifungal, diaphoretic, uh, and an astringent. So, loads of benefits for the, the red nettle. But actually, if you pull it up, it won't come back. Unlike nettles, where the root system will make them pop up every year. You'll have to wait for the seeds to grow in your garden again or to float in on the wind. So if you have some, it's worth keeping. It's very pretty and very good for the bees at this time of year when there's not many flowers about. And uh, it's sometimes called red archangel because you very often see the white dead nettle with the white flowers on, which children like to suck the nectar out of. That's called archangel. So it's, it's um, the same plant basically, but a different color. So um, red archangel. And the reason that they're called archangel is because really they usually flowering the white version around the apparition uh, the feast of the apparition in may where saint michael the archangel um came down i don't i'm not really that familiar with that story i'll have to have a look into that one just peeping up here look we've got the early shoots of the cleavers and these are really great for a lymphatic cleanser so clearing out all the toxins and cleansing cleansing out all the rubbish good for flushing out the kidneys so um, these young tips are ideal really to stew up in a nice um, boil to, to have as a tea um, cleavers usually are drunk cold so you could infuse them and have them once it's cooled down but you can also make all sorts of um, pestos and things adding these in it's what you know as sticky weed when you're a kid but the young shoots are are really the best and right down at the bottom on the floor all the floor weeds are beginning to pop up and here we are my, one of my favorites nettle urtica dioica which is just full of iron and minerals and a real spring tonic to have after the winter these spring tips are the best by far I'm just trotting on my way back from school and here, amongst all the rubbish that I'm about to pick up and put in the bin, um, all the little wood violets have just found Fiona odorata. Aren't they sweet? Beautiful little violets. 
So Viola Rodorata is also known as the Sweet Violet and um, apart from it being made into confectionery for generations, it's actually really good to have for bronchitis, coughs and colds, um, anything to do with the lungs, good for asthma. Um, so I'm not going to pick any of that because it's such a small patch and it looks so pretty amongst the wayside at this time of year, but really useful for lung type conditions. This is a uh, this is winter flowering viburnum and it always smells beautiful at this time of year and I always think it's a real lifesaver for the um, bumblebees that are starting to come out of their holes in the ground. Some bees will tentatively be leaving their shelters in February and having a look about, see what they can find, feasting on the pollen from the hazel catkins and anything else they can find. And in the beehive, um, the focus will be on staying warm still, but if it's a mild of February, then the queen may lay some larva in the middle of the hibernating circle and uh, the larva will be able to be kept warm by the strength of all the surrounding bees There's no blackthorn on this particular walk, but if you're lucky enough to live near any, it should be blossoming right now. Blackthorn, which makes the slow berries in the autumn, is one of the first blossoms you'll see, and the flowers will come out way before any leaves appear. So little white tiny flowers in the hedgerow at this time of year is blackthorn and you can spot them and earmark them to know where to get your slows from in the autumn. Just don't get them from by a road. I'm heading home now. I think that's probably loads for this video. It's quite a long one, which I'm sorry about, but I did have a lot to say about February. <laughs> Less in March, I guess. Um, so do like to learn a little bit from nature at the end of the videos lately. So last month we were being snowdrops. Um, and we were having fortitude to get through the ice and finding strength within us. Well, in the grand scheme of in bulk and the, the feeling around of spring cleaning and all these crows and herons tending to their nests, I think we should be like the crow this month or the heron if you're not a big fan of crows. And we should look to our nests, which are our homes and deep inside ourselves as well and have a good old clear out. Let's have a spring clean of the home and, and make it refreshed and inviting for the spring months ahead, but also our minds and our bodies. So think about what you could do to refresh yourself. Do you need to go and have some time alone or a massage or do some yoga or a bit of gardening to give yourself a little bit of headspace. What's in your life that you need to clear out with all the rubbish that you're going to spring clean out of your house? Are you going to clear out toxic relationships? Are you going to clear out being taken advantage of? Are you going to clear out bad thoughts about yourself? So be a crow this month or a heron. Tend to your nest, tend to yourself, and get rid of what you don't need. I'll see you in March. Bye.